Tristan Casas is going to be one of the biggest difference makers for the Boston Red Sox in 2024. Find out why on today's Locked on Red Sox. You are Locked on Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbut, former ESPN social media associate and the current host of the Boston Balling Podcast. And I am here to bring the latest in all things Boston Red Sox straight to your favorite podcast feed for free. Everyone should see the word free and get excited. So you definitely should make the Locked On Red Sox podcast your first listen of every day. Locked On is here for you with your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Welcome to another episode of the show, and I had a pretty eventful weekend at Red Sox Winter Weekend. Later on in the show today, I'm going to be diving into just a couple key takeaways that I got from Winter Weekend that are important for Red Sox fans to note. But before all of that, I've been emphasizing on the show how important it is to have a team leader. Somebody who's able to rally the clubhouse, make the team better every day, and make everybody want to go out there and give 100% every day. And I know I keep repeating this, but that guy in 2023 was easily Justin Turner. And I just saw between the way he interacted with his teammates, the way people spoke of him that are around the Red Sox organization that people were calling him one of the best leaders that the Red Sox have ever had in the clubhouse. And that's saying a lot with how many names and classic people have gone through the Red Sox system as a player. And I'm grateful for that time that we had with Justin Turner. Not only did he have one of his best seasons to date on the field and was just so clutch and so consistent when he was at the plate, but also just that leadership quality where he was able to be a mentor to a lot of the younger players in the clubhouse. And the result of that is starting to show because a player who was playing the same position as him during the 2023 season and is the Red Sox primary first baseman now is Tristan Casas. And I truly do believe that Allowing him to work with Justin Turner during the 2023 season and have them kind of bouncing back and forth on that first base position and being able to share that role really helped Casas' career to grow exponentially compared to where it was at. And the rookie season he had was pretty incredible. He collected 113 hits 24 home runs and a team leading 70 walks over 132 games in his first full season in the majors last year. He also finished third in American League Rookie of the Year voting. He was very close to winning and certainly put up a good case for it. He only hit 133 with a 576 OPS between opening day and the end of April. It was a pretty rough first month for him. He was getting into the groove of things. People were calling him a bust, saying, why is this guy here? He quickly turned it around and then batted 291 with an OPS of 917 the rest of the season. Reminder that OPS means on base percentage plus slugging. So basically incorporating how many bases are you getting out of your hits or at bats. And he hit a 317 batting average after the All-Star break with a 1.034 OPS. So as I've talked about on the show before, his numbers have just continued to go up 
And as the season progressed, I just saw more and more growth and confidence from him with the way that he approached the game and his pitch selection when he was at the plate in terms of what he would swing at and what he would not swing at. It was just a constant upward trajectory for him. And another fun fact that's important to note about Tristan Casas is he's one of five rookies in Red Sox franchise history to hit at least 24 home runs in a single season before turning 24. The first one actually to do that was my guy, the first Red Sox uniform I ever owned, Nomar Garcia Parra. He did it in 1997. It's interesting that everything comes full circle that now Casas is doing that. And after that season he had, I said, wow, I cannot wait to see this kid continue to grow and develop and be a piece that the Red Sox really will need in 2024 and beyond. If he had as good of a rookie season as he had, imagine how much better he's going to perform now that he has a full season under his belt and he's more used to that environment of playing at Fenway, being around that Fenway crowd, because as we know, it's not the easiest place to play. And he's just seemed to develop his confidence so much. And I do give Justin Turner partial credit for that. And he's been able to develop his confidence so much so that other people around the Red Sox organization, particularly Alex Cora, are calling him the Red Sox offseason MVP. He's really been stepping up. What Alex Cora mentioned that he thought was cool was that he went to the Dominican Republic when the team had the group going there. And he also went to Dallas to attend Trevor Story's mini camp, which, by the way, what a great idea by Trevor Story, trying to help other players in the Red Sox infield to become better defensively at their positions. And Story is one of the best in the game defensively. So that alone helps me feel a little bit more confident about the Red Sox defensively in 2024, knowing that some of these guys are getting that help and guidance from Story. Because prior to Story coming back last year, the defense was very weak and it was a huge liability in the infield. And you look at guys like Rafael Devers, he needs to improve defensively. Kike was a problem. Glad he's not on the team anymore. Vaughn Grisham, I need to see more of to see how good defensively he actually can really be. And then obviously Casas. And the fact that Casas took it upon himself to go to Trevor Story's minicamp shows that he wants to continue to improve. That alone is a strong leadership quality for a player to have. Somebody who's constantly looking to improve their game. He also attended the Red Sox rookie development program that had a number of Red Sox prospects who are trying to develop and improve their game more. And he basically took it upon himself to join those prospects and wanted to get to know them and make himself available for any advice or guidance they may need. So that's another reason why I really like that leadership Casas is displaying in terms of I want to be a mentor to guys whose position I used to be in not too long ago. And if they can trust him and come to him, it'll help their confidence even further before they get called up to the major. So that's definitely a promising sign for him. And Alex Cora basically just went on to say, it's just generally been a really good off season for Casas physically and mentally and understanding really what his role is for the Red Sox and what he means to them. And Trevor Story also agreed that Casas is really coming into his own as a player person and leader and that he's very wise beyond his years when it comes to his special mind for the game and understanding what he needs to do to get ready on a day-to-day -day basis and constantly improve and the fact that he was just a rookie and we're now starting to say all these things about his leadership because Forget about his performance on the field for a second because I've already touched on what made that so great in his rookie season and how that easily can just continue to improve. But the fact that he's this young and he's already starting to show those leadership qualities that we need in guys on our team is tremendous. And that could be a massive game changer for Boston as they look ahead to this upcoming season because it's very underrated 
when you have your leader on the team and the guy who's going to be there to make sure everybody else is staying motivated, make sure that everybody's in the place at the right time doing what they're supposed to be doing and rallying the clubhouse and making it good vibes. And even on the hard days, helping the team to bounce back the next day. So Casas to me is going to be somebody who's going to make a huge difference in a positive way to the Red Sox this upcoming season. Because when they lost Justin Turner, I was worried that the Red Sox wouldn't be able to replace his productivity and leadership. But if Casas is able to come into that role, it's going to help the Red Sox to be a better team in 2024 due to the camaraderie and the vibe. So I'm looking forward to watching what he does in 2024. And coming up, I'm also looking forward to seeing the Red Sox starting pitching approach, which I'm going to dive into a little bit more. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. For somebody who really does not know much about cars at all, actually, which is why I host a Red Sox podcast and I don't work in a mechanic shop. eBay Motors has been super helpful and life-changing for me for any car parts that I need, and they'll help guide me through what I actually need for the situation. So head to eBay Motors today. You should also download the Sirius XM app and search Red Sox because what's cool about it is it'll actually generate the home broadcast of every Red Sox game for you. So you don't have to worry about missing a single pitch. It's a Really nice addition to have if you can't get home in time for the start of the game, then you can at least listen to it while you're driving. So download the Sirius XM app today as well. Something that I found interesting that the Boston Red Sox are doing in 2024 is trying to figure out what their starting rotation is going to look like. They have four defined starters already in Lucas Giolito, Brian Bayo, Cutter Crawford, and Nick Pavetta. Very tentative starting rotation with some question marks. Brian Bayo, I'm excited to see work with Andrew Bailey and see how he continues to develop. Same with Cutter Crawford. But there are certainly question marks there with Nick Pavetta and Lucas Giolito. And whether they perform well or not, is going to be a massive game changer for this pitching staff. But in terms of that fifth starting rotation spot, there are a few guys the Red Sox are saying are in the mix for that spot. Josh Winkowski, who we've only seen out of the bullpen, but pitched a very good 2023 season out of the pen. And then Garrett Whitlock and Tanner Houck, both guys who have kind of spent some time starting games and spent some time pitching out of the pen. And I personally like both of them better out of the pen, but they're saying that they might consider each of them as a starter. And another guy is Cooper Criswell, a pitcher that the Red Sox acquired this offseason. And he has been told by the team that he has to enter spring training prepared to be a starting pitcher. All 10 of his appearances in the majors in 2023 came in relief. But they were mostly of the bulk relief type as he pretty much went no less than two innings and as many as 4.2 frames across those 10 outings. So he's more of a heavy lifting reliever type of guy. He's 27 years old. He made 17 starts and six relief appearances last year in Triple A, And then winning a rotation spot was something that was more he came up in the majors because they needed somebody to come up and pitch but 
when it comes to the Red Sox rotation, he probably won't be the guy who starts in the rotation just because he hasn't spent as much time here as some of these other pitchers. But he does have an option remaining, so he could open the season in AAA in their rotation and kind of build up that stamina to be able to be a starter and then come up and pitch out of the Red Sox rotation. Now, all of this is basically saying, you know, we have some guys who could fight for this starting spot and it's easier to transition from being a starter to being a reliever than from being a reliever to being a starter because you have to build up that arm strength and endurance to be able to pitch deeper into games and a longer number of innings. Whereas if you're transitioning from a starter to a reliever, you can just cut down the work that you're doing and the amount of pitches you're throwing each outing that you have. So because of the fact that the Red Sox are taking this approach it basically is saying to me, we have a few guys in contention here that could end up in a starting position, but we want them all to be prepared to be a starter and do their training as if they're going to be a starter. And although I haven't been overall thrilled with the entire offseason that the Red Sox have had, I am actually liking this approach because it's better to over-prepare people than under-prepare. A good example is I used to run cross country. I was a pretty intense runner in high school and our meets were 3.1 mile races. So in practice, we naturally would run five to six miles a day to prepare ourselves for that race so that we wouldn't get tired. If every practice we were running that exact distance of just 3.1 miles, we would probably get fatigued mid race because our body was trained to know that that was the end of the run and we would start to get tired and have trouble finishing the race. So we were overcompensating by running five to six miles a day so that the 3.1 mile races wouldn't feel as long. So it's a similar approach the Red Sox are taking. Let's over prepare these guys, treat them like they're all going to be starters and have them do their off-season training as if they're going to be a part of the rotation. And then when the time comes, we see who's been the most effective during camp and during spring training and just evaluate from there and say, okay, which one of these guys deserves that last spot in the rotation? I actually think that could work out very well for all of these guys because even the ones who don't end up in the rotation are still going to get valuable experience being able to pitch in longer relief roles. We've seen Garrett Whitlock as a starter, so he definitely can pitch, you know, four to five innings. It especially can benefit Tanner Houck, who has always struggled the third time through the order when he sees the lineup for the third time. So that's another person who could seriously benefit from this because he's going to be focusing on building up that endurance, trying to mix up his pitches a little bit more effectively so that he can see a lineup the third time and they're still struggling and they're not just hitting him around all over the place once he gets to that third time through the order and it would allow him to pitch deeper into games. And Josh Winkowski, if they feel like he deserves a starting spot, he needs to break out of that barrier of only pitching out of the bullpen and gain experience being on the starting side. And in order to be able to gain that ability and endurance to do that, he needs to start pitching in longer stints and adding more pitches to his resume and being able to think like a starter and mentally put himself in that place of being a starter. So for him, this will likely benefit him from the standpoint of even if he doesn't end up being a starter, he'll be able to last more than two innings in relief. And one of the biggest problems that the Red Sox had during the 2023 season was that their relievers were being overworked getting too much work in because the starters were unable to pitch deep into games. And if consistently your starters are averaging about five innings per start, then that's a lot of pressure on the bullpen to have to pull the weight the rest of the game. So then Alex Cora would be stuck putting guys into certain situations that you might not have wanted to see in that particular situation because 
he didn't really have a choice because other guys had been pitching too much lately. So that's where he was at. And he had to put somebody there who maybe hasn't pitched in a while, but wasn't the best guy for that spot. So that's what I'm hoping they can avoid in 2024, because by the end of the season, this bullpen was just so fatigued and it was obvious because their performances were starting to be affected by it. And if the Red Sox are going into this off season, working with pitchers on having longer stints and guys like Cooper Criswell, who has had starting experience in the minors, but hasn't had starting experience in the majors is able to get in that mode and that mindset of having a routine that starters have. Then even if he doesn't end up as that last starter, he'll be prepared to pitch out of the bullpen and hopefully feel more confident because of the fact that he's been able to work more and pitch more innings to the point where he can last longer in game. So I really actually like this approach. And one of the people I would guess that's likely behind taking this approach is Andrew Bailey, who I'm going to be touching on a little bit next. If you like the Boston Red Sox and want to continue to catch your team every day, just subscribe to Locked on Red Sox on your favorite podcast platform for free. You can get it wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave a review, leave a rating, talk to your friends and family who also enjoy the Red Sox and get them into it as well because you won't want to miss out on anything, especially when the season starts. I have a lot of fun here. Just getting either angry or really excited or happy, whatever the emotion is that the Red Sox put me in that day. And you'll be along for the whole ride if you subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And also speaking of subscribing, Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. So you should absolutely subscribe to that because you can get caught up in everything going on in sports so you don't have to worry about feeling like you have to scroll through Twitter to get caught up with it every day. So don't miss out on anything related to sports. All the Lockdown hosts are there for you with a 24-7 streaming channel. So subscribe to Lockdown Sports today. Also, download the SiriusXM app so you can get the home broadcast of every Red Sox game straight to your feed so you don't have to worry about missing anything. It's honestly awesome. It's a great way to feel like you're not missing out on any of the action. And for you, if you are anything like me, you don't like missing any of the action. So definitely download that today so you're ready for the season and it'll generate the home broadcast of every game for you. One thing about this Red Sox team that I think isn't being talked about enough for 2024 is the impact that new pitching coach Andrew Bailey could make on these players. I was at Winter Weekend this past weekend and actually had the pleasure of speaking with him for a little bit. Such a nice guy. Seems very excited to be back in Boston. And I was talking to him a little bit about his approach for this upcoming season. What is his mindset when it comes to working with these pitchers? And one thing that he said to me that really stood out was, you have to understand that every player is different. Every pitcher has a different routine, a different way of prepping for their outings, a different way of getting in that mental mindset of being ready for a game. And you have to understand that when you're working with them. And I feel like in the past, the Red Sox pitching coach situation wasn't always the best because there might not have been as much of an understanding of individuality and each guy being different. And what I really liked about Andrew Bailey is that he seems to have a firm grasp on that approach. And you want a guy to come in there who's able to adapt to that, get to know each player on the roster at the position that you're working with, and understand that they're each going to have their strengths and weaknesses, and they're each going to have their own way of learning and their own way of doing things. Because at the end of the day, they're human beings first. I mean, I'm sure you have different ways of approaching your job than coworkers do. We all do because we're all different and we all have different strategies and things that work for us. And if Andrew Bailey can come in there and understand that about his pitchers, then the Red Sox 
are going to elevate overall as a pitching staff. And I'm excited to see him work with guys like Brian Bayo, who struggled every time he took the mound during the day last year. Like, what exactly was it about daytime starts that were throwing him off? Was it the fact that his routine had to be cut short because he'd get to the ballpark and didn't have as much time to warm up and go through his pregame routine before the game? Or was it that he just felt more comfortable at night? Like, what exactly was it? I'm hoping Andrew Bailey can come in and hone in on that aspect of his game because if he can elevate his game during daytime starts, then whew, watch out, everybody. I mean, I've said for a while now, Brian Bayo absolutely has the potential to be an ace. Whether that's right now, likely not. I mean, he still needs some work. I don't see him at this specific point in time as an ace, but that's okay because that's what developing is for. But I think having that right guy in there to work with these pitchers is key. And something that really stood out to me again about Bailey was he seems to genuinely care. I mean, he played here in Boston and he said he was really happy to be back here and excited to be on a different side of things and being able to take his knowledge of the game as a pitcher and apply it towards these guys who are in that position now. And he mentioned to me that it's just a whole different outlook when he's on the coaching side versus when he was a player. And from the coaching side, it's more understanding like, okay, I know how I felt when I was going through this or I was in this situation. So now I'm going to help these guys out by making sure that I'm spreading that wisdom to them of, hey, you're going to go through hardships, but as long as you are able to continue to hone in on your strengths and bounce back from that, I think that'll really help a lot of these guys emotionally. So that was one of my biggest takeaways that I had from Winter Weekend was that having Andrew Bailey here makes this team in good shape. And something that was interesting that he had mentioned in a clip in an interview that I saw on Twitter was that he said, he doesn't feel like you really need a defined set closer. You just need a lot of guys who can pitch in high leverage situations. And while I've seen this Red Sox team fall apart when they don't have a defined closer, that type of quote does worry me a little bit. I was happy when the Red Sox got Kenley Jansen because yes, he is past his prime and past the dominant Kenley Jansen that we saw when he was in LA, but he's still a legitimate closer and we know he can get the job done and actually close out games. So that was something that I was happy about because I said, oh, finally, the Red Sox don't have to just throw random guys into the closing spot now with no rhyme or reason to it and hope they can close out games and not blow these close leads at the end. So I really liked that they got Kenley and If they do decide that they want to trade Kenley, then it's really a matter of, okay, who do they put into that closing role? Do they move Chris Martin into that spot, who was such an absolutely dominant eighth inning bridge guy in 2023? Or do they switch around between people and try out different guys in that role? It really just depends what approach they want to take. And if Andrew Bailey is pretty firm in his opinion on the fact that you don't really need a defined closer, then obviously he has some sort of approach he wants to take with his bullpen to get a lot of guys to be able to pitch under that pressure. And the fact that he's understanding of that pressure himself because he used to pitch could be just a very good situation for these guys. So I had a great conversation with him at winter weekend. I also just loved seeing all the different guys who were going up to do interviews with Tom Karen and all the prospects that were there. I actually had a brief conversation with Roman Anthony and he just is hungry. That kid wants to continue to get better every single day and get called up to the majors. And I can already tell just from his attitude and the way he carried himself during our conversation that he cannot wait to get called up. And that's how I know this kid's going to be an absolute stud when he comes up to the majors. The stats say it, his performances in the minors say it, and he's going to be the real deal. And that was another big thing for me that I got out of the weekend was that kid is driven, motivated, determined, wants to be here. 
and is confident in himself. And for a young kid, young player who hasn't had any experience at a major league baseball, he carries himself with a lot of poise and a lot of confidence. And those are the types of guys that you want as the future of your franchise. So I'm rooting for him. I know he's going to do great things when he does come up and it was a really good experience overall this weekend. If you have never been to winter weekend, I highly recommend doing it. It's a great way to have a lot of great conversations, make connections, meet a lot of cool people. And I met some other awesome fans along the way too. So definitely save the dates for next year and check it out. If you haven't, it was a great experience. Lots of great takeaways from me. And also don't forget to download the SiriusXM app so that you can get the home broadcast of every Red Sox game straight to your phone. And subscribe to Locked On Sports today on YouTube because we launched the first ever 24-7 sports streaming channel. So you don't have to worry about missing anything related to sports. It's a long time sometimes and really time consuming to have to scroll through Twitter and catch up on everything that's going on. So all of our talented Locked On hosts will be there with the biggest sports stories of the day to keep you updated on everything that's going on. So subscribe to Locked On Sports today on YouTube. As always, keep the faith. Go Red Sox. And I will catch you on the flip side.